Hello everybody, my name is Becky. I'm a wildlife interpreter here at Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge. So we're going to be doing tours a little differently since we are closed up until April 1st due to the coronavirus. Um, for protection of our guests, our staff, and our animals here, we're gonna be doing virtual tours for you guys that we're gonna be posting on our social media. So my name is Becky, as I mentioned. So we have been here since 1992. We're a true accredited sanctuary, rescuing exotic big cats and bear that people have tried to have as pets. Unfortunately, there are more tigers living in the United States in someone's backyard than left in the wild in Asia where they belong. So we are accredited through the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So no buying, selling, trading, breeding, cup pounding, selfie taking, none of that here. When you are visiting Turpentine, you're welcome to take all the photos you would like through the fence, but no one is ever in there with these animals. So today on the tour, you're gonna see various animal species and we're gonna get ready to get started and we'll head around this circle of the gravel path and we'll get going. Hello everybody, so we are here with Slip, our white-nosed Kawada Mundi, or Kawadi for short. So she is out here in her grassy habitat playing and looking for bugs. She's digging holes in the ground. So Kawada Mundi is actually related to a raccoon. They can be found throughout South Central America. And you will notice that in her habitat you might see yellow bridges. Those are actually made out of fire hose that are donated to us. She is an arboreal species, so she likes to be at the top of the trees. So we give her things to be able to climb. She also has a wire roof at the top of her habitat. Any animal with the ability to leap, climb, or jump, they are gonna have a wire roof at the very top. Miss Flip here is not a cat, but we do rescue other things besides cats. We just mostly have big cats here at Turpentine. She has a long nose to smell in the ground for bugs and worms, and she likes to dig holes much like an armadillo does. Her tail is long to help her balance in those treetops. Miss Flip here did come from a place in Branson um, that allowed interaction with their predators. I always like to say she is small, but do you really think it's a great idea to try and give a raccoon a big hug? You're gonna get clawed and you're gonna get scratched and Miss Flip can do the same exact thing. So from Miss Flip, we're actually gonna move over to our next animal that we have on our tour, tour loop over here. We're gonna scoot over and we're gonna see Miss Fergie, who was our first big cat on the tour. So we're here at the habitat with Miss Fergie, who is actually one of our ligers. So ligers are a cat that we do have here. They are not a cat that is found in the wild. A liger is a hybrid of a dad lion and a mom tiger. Unfortunately, this is created by people to make money off of them in the entertainment industry. They are beautiful and gorgeous, but they're really not supposed to exist. So they're not gonna come together naturally in the wild. So Miss Fergie here, um, is one of our three ligers, which I'll tell you a little more details about later on the tour. But she did come from a place in Colorado. It was a fake roadside zoo that had 115 animals living on 12 acres. It was a massive big cat rescue. It was the biggest big cat rescue in US history. We spearheaded it, but also not without the help of other sanctuaries. We did not have enough room here for 115 animals plus what we already had. We did bring 34 animals here and we took the others to sanctuaries who are just like us across the United States. So on the tour, when you hear me say Colorado Project, that is what I mean. And Miss Fergie, our liger here, was one of those that came. She likes her Christmas trees. Uh, we will give these guys Christmas trees as part of their enrichment toys, which we'll also later talk about. And this year, a Lowe's near us gave over 200 Christmas trees and there's like a Christmas tree farm in all these habitats and she loves it. She took her toys in there, rolled around and she had a great time. But she is walking over in the distance so we're actually going to scoot over to Tigger and Floyd to our other tigers that we have just across from us. Hey everybody, so we're here with Tigger and Floyd. They're our next cats on our tour loop. Now being a true sanctuary, we never force any of our animals to do what they do not want to do. So if they want to be taking a nap, if they want to be playing, if they want to be hanging out inside, they are free to. Tigger and Floyd are actually hanging out in the back half of their habitat, which is fine. That is what they are wanting to do right now. They are two tigers that came from Oklahoma in January of last year. There were six tigers that a gentleman had that he needed to be rehomed, re rescued. Um, he was getting evicted off of property and asked us to rescue these cats. So they are two of the cats you will see from this Oklahoma rescue. Um, you're going to see a few more further down the tour. Tigger and Floyd are some of the favorites among our lodging guests. So we are a nonprofit. So everything goes back to help us take care of these cats. We do have lodge rooms here on property you can stay in. And it doesn't matter what room you're in, you're going to hear the cats at night. A lion can be heard up to five miles away. A tiger can be heard up to a few miles away. And Tigger and Floyd are kind of sandwiched between um, their habitats between a few of those um, lodging opportunities that we have. So these two are a favorite among our lodging guests. Tigger 
is what you call a tabby tiger. So a tabby or a strawberry tiger. He has more golden color to him. He does not have black stripes. He is also a cat that has been bred for that coloration for the entertainment industry. And Mr. Floyd, who lives in here with him, is an orange tiger. They both came together, but they're not actually this actual brothers. They came together because they were living with each other at the habitat that we rescued them from. So this is why they are still together. We don't introduce big cats together if they were not living in an enclosure when we rescued them. You risk fighting. Um, smaller cats are a little different and you will see some of our small cats that are together even though they did not come together. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to head down the gravel pathway to our African servals to see if they are out and about hanging out. So we're here with our African servals. An African serval is a really cool cat. They're not a baby cheetah, they're not a baby leopard. They do have spots, but they are their own species. They're a small cat found throughout Africa. They're a really amazing little predator. They can jump up to 10 feet straight in the air to catch a bird mid-flight. They will on average in the wild pee and mark their habitat about 40 times an hour on average. They also, when they go hunting, they successfully catch half of everything they hunt. They are technically a better hunter than a lion and a tiger. A lion and a tiger success rate is not 50%. They're lucky if it's even 15%. Um, so these guys are small but mighty. But unfortunately, people think because of their size that they make a great pet. But that is not right. There are six cats who live in this habitat. Five of them are African servals and one is a savanna cat, which we'll get to. An African serval is a wild animal even though they are small. So do you really think it is a good idea to have a cat in your house who can jump 10 feet in the air, pee in your house 40 times an hour, and is a better hunter than a tiger? And the answer to that is no. Just like with these big cats, they are still a predator, not a pet. A savanna cat, which is one of the cats that we do have in here, is a hybrid. So a liger was a big cat hybrid, a savanna is a small cat hybrid. It is an African serval bred with a domesticated house cat. You guys, they're still a wild animal. They can still do the same thing and they can end up with health issues because they're two species that are not supposed to be together. Every one of these cats that live in this habitat were living in someone's house. Giselle was living in a house in Little Rock and really never set foot on grass until she got here. Whistler was a serval from Colorado, not the big Colorado project, but he was privately owned by a gentleman who had three servals in total. He no longer wanted them. He expected them to survive a Colorado winter um, whenever he opened the door and he let them out. The fishing game found Whistler up there. Whistler's ears on his tail are shorter than they're supposed to be because he did have frostbite on those. So I like to say small but mighty, you guys, they are not a pet. But since they're not out, we're gonna scoot on down to our lions and talk a little bit about these guys. So we're here with Daniel and Chloe up on the hillside. These are, these are our only two lions that are together. You will see that Mr. Daniel, if he turns his head this way, you will notice that he does just have one eye. His eye was really infected when we got to the Colorado project. The vet could not save his eye, but Daniel's personality changed greatly. He had to have been in a lot of pain, you guys. Um, it's like getting poked in the eye with something, never going to the doctor, he gets infected, it's pretty painful. Um, so he gets along totally fine with the one eye. He and Chloe are together because they did come together. Um, so we are true sanctuary, no true sanctuary will breed. So what we do here is actually if you fully neuter a male lion, he will lose his mane because their mane is based off of testosterone. So we actually do a vasectomy on the male lion so they do not lose their mane. While they're here at Turpentine, any of these animals, we do not breed any of them. So the male are neutered if they're tigers and other species. It's the vasectomy that we do on our lions. I like to talk about Lion King a little bit here because Mr. Daniel, his mane kind of looks like Mufasa's off of Lion King. And Salvo, who you'll see next, his mane looks a little more like Scar. Actually, Scar should have been the king on Lion King, not Mufasa, because the darker mane, it is based off of testosterone. So the darker mane, the higher level, stronger male, the female does look for that. So Mr. Daniel feels like he's our alpha, but him and Saba would fight it out more than likely in the wild. But on a more serious note with the Lion King, Disney did help donate money to lion conservation to help these species in the wild with the new Lion King movie. Because when the cartoon was released almost 26 years ago, the number of lions living in the wild at that time, unfortunately we have lost half of them. In the early 1900s, there were almost 100,000 lions in Africa. Today there are less than 20,000 and they are extinct from 26 countries in Africa. Unfortunately, people will hunt these guys for trophy hunting, but they also feel like their meat is a delicacy as well and habitat destruction. So we have the part to be the voice for these animals here in the U.S. that face the exotic pet trade in the entertainment industry um, impacts, but we also have the voice to be there for their wild counterparts in the wild. 
But you'll see Miss Chloe's kind of looking down here, you guys. They like to take their naps up at the top. Lots of cat naps to take uh, around here. These animals do sleep about 18 to 20 hours a day on average. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoot on down to Mr. Salvo, our next lion. We'll tell you a little bit more about him. So we're here with Mr. Salvo. He's hanging out down here at the bottom of his fence. One of his favorite spots in his habitat. You'll see what I mean. He does have darker mane than Daniel up there. Mr. Salvo is one of our most talkative lions. He's usually the one to start the caroling. So when lion carols out or roaring, that's what can be heard up to five miles away. These guys will communicate as well. In the wild, lions will communicate if they have found food in their habitat, in their habitat, danger in their territory, things like that. Our lions speak with each other too. He's usually one that tries to start it. Sometimes the other lions will pick up with him. Sometimes they don't and he'll try again or he'll just give up. But on a more serious note though, imagine you're in your house and you look out your window to see that your neighbor has a lion or a tiger in their backyard as a pet. Do you think that it would be federally illegal? And the question to that is it should be, but the problem is it's not. It is state by state. In some states, unfortunately it is county by county. So if I say the name of your state, I'm not calling out your state. There are issues because there are grandfather rules in a lot of states, but Nevada, Wisconsin, Alabama, North Carolina, Unfortunately, that you are free to own whatever in those states, nothing is needed. And then there are some states it is by permit. Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, there's a lot of states where it is by permit. Usually it costs about $100 a year, sometimes less. You usually just have to be 18 years old, unfortunately. And then there are some states such as Arkansas where you can have certain species, species others you cannot. Then there are some states it is federally, it is illegal in those states, um, but there are grandfather rules that apply. So Arkansas, our law changed in 2005. A gentleman had a tiger named India. He no longer wanted her. He drove her to the Buffalo National River area and he did let her out in the woods. Hey, tiger. She smelled her way back to him over 60 miles away because these animals are hand raised, they're habituated. It doesn't matter what kind of animal it is. If it's a big cat, if it's a bird, it doesn't matter. These animals are hand raised by somebody. The full survival is taught by their moms and they don't get that. Yes, if you set foot in there, you're gonna get attacked. That is obviously there. But India didn't know what to do. So she smelled her way back to him. He then brought her here to Turpentine. And we had folks that worked here at the time went to Little Rock and they lobbied Little Rock to change the law. So now you cannot have a lion, a tiger, or bear anymore in Arkansas, but you can have servals, you can have other uh, animals as well. So this is the problem. These guys are a predator. They're not a pet. They're a beautiful but deadly animal. But you guys can actually help with this. There is a bill, it, if it gets passed, it's called the Big Cat Public Safety Act. It will make it federally legal for people to have these guys as pets. There's gonna be some stipulations involved with that and for cub petting industries. If you will visit our website, click on advocacy or the take action tab, you can type in your name and your zip code. It'll pull up an email preset for your Senator and Congressman. The more support we get, the better chances of this getting passed. They're beautiful, but they're deadly. We shouldn't know any of them. This is not real, but this is the size of a lion canine. Beautiful, but deadly animal. This is also not real, but this is the size of a lion tiger claw. Think of a house cat when they're mad. Think of a lion or a tiger who's bigger. They are beautiful, but predators, not pets. So what we're gonna do since he's taking his nap over here is we're gonna scoot over here to Mr. Frankie, the first tiger on the tour. So we're here with Frankie, he is a white tiger. So he's the first tiger on the tour you kind of kind of see since Tigger and Floyd were hanging in the back of their habitat. Frankie did come from Oklahoma with Tigger and Floyd. So sometimes even if they come together, we do have to separate if they try to pick a fight with each other. We're obviously not gonna let them get in a fight fight. Um, but if we see that they start not liking each other, we will separate, which is the case with Frankie. Frankie came, uh, was living in a habitat with Robbie and Tommy, who you'll see at the end of the tour. He is a lot smaller than they are and he was trying to pick a fight with them. So we did, we did end up separating him and bringing him down here. What was really funny is when we brought him to this habitat. So this habitat smelled like a lion because we had one of our older lions that we moved to our retirement area. So we put Frankie in here. So this habitat smelled different. So he was very interested in the smells. And then also he noticed that his neighbor looked different than him because he does have Salvo the lion as a neighbor. So these two would watch each other for a lot uh, that first few days especially. And they will walk up and down the fence with each other. They do really like each other. Um, but you will notice fencing inside Frankie's habitat on his trees. This is not to prevent him from climbing because lions and tigers cannot scurry straight up um, like a cougar or a bobcat per se. So it is actually to protect the tree from scratching so they don't kill the tree. So we do wrap the trees with those major scratchers in these habitats, but we always provide down tree logs for them so they can get their scratching that they would like to do. 
But again, he is taking one of the famous cat naps that you will see. It doesn't matter what time of year. Uh, it just depends on the cat when they want to take their nap in the morning, in the evening, during the day. It's just totally up to them. But what we are going to do is we are going to scoot around the corner to Mama and Bosco and we'll come see these guys. So we're here with Mama and Bosco. So this Mama is the solid white tiger who you see here. Bosco is laying on the bench. He's the one with the dark stripes. So this is a sad story that I'm going to tell you, but we don't tell you the sad stories to make you feel bad. We do tell you the sad stories because it is out of sight, out of mind, what really happens with these animals. And going forward, education is key to help your life and to save these guys as well. So Mama and Bosco here were part of a cub petting industry at that Colorado project. Mama had four sets of cubs in this time frame it takes to have one set naturally. In the wild, the tiger's cubs will stay with her for around two to three years to learn how to be a tiger. Well, she had four sets of cubs in about that time frame. So what happens is it is like a puppy mill. They will speed breed. They will breed the female, take the babies away as soon as she has them. To her, they have passed away, so then they, she will start rebreeding again. Then they take those cubs and they let the public interact with them. So imagine you have a, let's say, four-week-old infant and you go into a Target or any other large store and you let every person you see pass you that four week old infant around to every person every day, about eight to 10 hours a day or more, seven days a week until they're around 12 weeks or 30 pounds. This is what happens with these guys. They are not developing right because they are taking away from her and they are not fed right so they will sit still with a bottle in their mouth for a photo shoot. The public is allowed to pass around, play, take pictures, feed these animals. The thing is, once they reach that weight age limit, they're no longer a money maker for the cub petting industry because they get too big. So then if they're not sold to pet trade, to circuses, traveling shows, they are sold to hunting ranches and they're sold for their parts as well. So my soapbox is please research before you visit a place. If they are allowing interaction with these big predators, they're not a real location. They're not a real zoo, not a real sanctuary. Yes, a long time ago, a lot of places will let people interact before research was done on stress level and things like that. But true zoos, true sanctuaries are not gonna let it interact with these big predators. And this is what it's all about. Seeing them like this, giving them the life they deserve. We love watching them play, obviously, but they're not here to entertain. They're here to have the life that they once deserved. Miss Mama came from a magic show before she went to that Colorado project. So she went from awful to awful before she found her forever home. And the thing is that these cub petting places, those cubs are lucky if they live in 100 to 150 days on average. Because once they reach that eight, weight age limit, they're no longer useful. So just research a place before you visit them um, and ask questions, which I'll later give you some examples of. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda turn around and I'm gonna point an area over the hillside for you to see that has more animals as well. So over the hillside, you're gonna see some fencing down there. That is what we call Rescue Ridge that acts as our retirement area for our older animals. We do have a lot of hills here in the Ozarks, so these hillsides can get harder on the animals as they age. So we do shift them down there to it's a flat area. It's a lot easier on them. We do have about around 20 animals down there. The far background where you see the pine trees and the taller fence, that is actually our bear habitat. Between the two of those, they're close to four acres, a little over three acres, fully wooded so the bears can climb and dig. We have 10 bears of turpentine, so most of our bears do live down there in that area. Then we have the older animals in the front. We don't do general public tours down there. We do specialty tours with our animal care staff. That is a fundraiser for us. So you can actually go online and reserve one of those tours if you would like. But also this did not start as a happy retirement. It did start when a lady in Mountain Burke, Arkansas, did have well over 30 animals on her property who could have escaped out. Their habitats were not put together very well. A lot of them had major health issues. So we did hurry and build that in 128 days to get these animals out. This is why everything coming through the door and all these donations do help us to provide the life for these animals to get out of the situations that they are in. So it's really funny when our lions carol, usually these guys up here start like Savo, but sometimes you can hear our two oldest lions down there finishing the caroling. They have to have the last word a lot of times. Um, so those are some of our animals that are down there that you won't really see on the general tour, but you can see on the specialized tour. But we're gonna scoot up here to Mr. Roman and see if he's out and about. So we're here with Mr. Roman. So Roman is a white tiger. If he comes up, you'll see he likes to really stalk. Um, he thinks he's an amazing hider. He'll try to hide behind the trees and things and he thinks you can't see him. However, we can see him. So my question is, do you honestly think a white tiger is something you're really gonna find running around in the wild? The answer to that is not anymore. So a white tiger is due to a recessive gene. I have red hair, left-handed, those are recessive genes. 
but you have 7 billion people on Earth. You have a lot of the options in the gene pool for recessive genes. In the tiger world, it is a 1 in 10,000 chance to be born naturally with that recessive gene. So what happened was a gentleman in the 50s discovered how to inbreed tigers to get more options for the recessive gene to make more white tigers. With this inbreeding comes a lot of issues. Teeth, back, feet, eye problems, organ issues, a whole bunch of things can happen. Every white tiger you see is genetically related to the same one tiger in the 50s that started it all and his immediate offspring. Mr. Roman, if he comes up, you'll notice his eyes don't look quite normal. This is because of this inbreeding that takes place. His depth perception a lot of times is not what it should be. And another question I usually like to ask the kids, but do you think a white tiger would really be able to hide in a jungle? Not really. So even when they were white in the wild, they more than likely didn't live as long because they couldn't hide very well. They cannot camouflage. Roman lives in here with Donner. They both came from that Colorado project. Um, and Donner really loves his 60, 60 pound boomer ball that is up here that you'll see in a little bit. Um, he, all of these cats will drag it around with their teeth and claws like it's nothing. They'll pick them all the way up with their te teeth and put them in their pool. Um, so again, these guys are huge animals, predators, not pets. We can't say it enough. Um, I love Roman. He is my favorite tiger here. So he is stalking us right now, which is pretty fun to watch. But what we're going to do is we are going to scoot on up here and we'll see who else we can find out in their habitat. 